Hello there and welcome to this series of computer science videos looking at paper two of the AS specification. So this is all about our practical programming exam really. And in these series of videos, I'm gonna split them down. It's a two hour, 15 minute paper and each video is gonna cover a different part of the paper. So it's important that we start here because I'm gonna give you the scenario in video one and we can work through and take question by question. So here it says we need to answer all the questions. So in this paper, there are four questions in total and we're gonna answer one section of question five. Now this is the one that relates to our integrated development environment of our chosen program language and we've chosen to use Visual Basic. So we're gonna use or choose that section. Now, when you get this in your exam, you'll record all your answers in a single word process document and that will then be sent off and uploaded and then it'll be marked by the exam board. And we'll have the integrated development environment already installed and you can take calculator in with you to your exam. Now, it is very important that you save your work on a regular basis in case of any mishaps. So, as we go down the paper, we first start with our scenario. So this is the ice zone ice skating rink scenario. So here, ice zone is a large independent ice skating rink. The local ice hockey team play their home matches and train on the ice rink. Ice zone also offers ice skating sessions to the general public during its daytime operate opening periods. A member of staff at the ice rink provides advanced lessons for competition skaters. The manager of ice zone has dedicated to commission a new computerized system to store staff details such as staff ID, first name, surname and postcode. The system is also to be used to help monitor and record the temperature of the skating surface of the ice rink. You have been commissioned to develop a prototype computer system. As we move on through the paper, we can see question one which is what we're gonna tackle first in this video. So Ice Zone is considering an object-oriented approach to programming its computer systems. It wishes to use a UML class diagram to describe the relationships between its classes. Now, UML stands for Unified Modeling Language, so it's a diagram that represents our classes in our system as a whole. IceZone would like a superclass called Person. The Person class should have four protected attributes first name, surname, home address, postcode, which are all of type string. The person class should have four public methods to set each of the four attributes, which all accept a parameter. Isone would like a subclass staff called staff, which inherits from class person. The staff class should have a private attribute called staff ID of type integer, and the staff class should have two public methods, one for setting the staff ID, which accepts a parameter of type integer, and a method for returning the staff ID, which returns an integer value. Create a, a single class diagram for this situation. And that's 12 marks. So let's break this down and go through this exam question step by step. So here is our question and we're going to break it down and I like to make notes on the question to help me guide me through and also it helps me double check at the end that I've actually achieved everything that was asked or being asked of me in the question. So ISONE is considering an object-oriented approach to programming its computer systems. Okay, so object-oriented approach, I'm already I'm thinking about classes, I'm thinking about attributes, I'm thinking about methods. It wishes to use a UML diagram to describe the relationship between the classes. Isone would like a superclass, a superclass called person. Okay, now what I'm thinking is, if I just use my shapes up here so I can, you can actually see what's going on. If I put my first class here, and this is my superclass called person. The person class should have four protected attributes. So four protected attributes. Now when we write UML class diagrams, protected attributes start with a hash symbol. 
So those are first name, surname, home address, and postcode. Now, if you look at your class diagram, you will see that normal class diagrams are split into two parts. The first or the top part is normally where the attributes go. And think of attributes like your variables. Down here in the bottom part, this is where your methods are stored. Methods are like your procedures and your functions. So here in the person part, it says four protected attributes. So that's going to go in the top half of, he of this here, this class diagram and the superclass. And I'm going to put in here my protected characteristics. So the hash means it's protected and I've got first name, first name, I have my protected characteristic, sorry about my hash is hashes by the way, surname, I've got home address, and finally, I've got postcode. And it says, which are all of type string. So, after you've written your protected characteristic, we use a colon to say what data type would you like. And I'm going to use string on all of these. So two colons, hopefully you can see those. Three colons, string, postcode, string. So I've done that now. I think I'm happy with that first Sentence, the person class should have four public methods. Now, if we're talking about public methods, that means it's accessible across other classes and the public use the symbol of a plus there. So four public methods to set each of the four attributes which accept a parameter. Now, it says there which set each of the four attributes. So for me, I would just put, keep these as good self-documenting identifiers, I would put plus set first name plus set surname plus set home address and then plus set postcode. Should be one word. These are pluses, by the way. Plus, there we go. And each one of these is obviously going to be of type string because they're setting these, which are above, which are strings anyway. So this time, in brackets, we would say string here. Now, the reason why I've done that in brackets is because it says there, which all accept a parameter, a single parameter or argument so parameters go inside brackets because methods have brackets and so do functions as well. So we basically say the parameter is going to be of type string in each one of these. Now in object-oriented programming, you use methods to set and to get information, often referred to as getters and setters. So here we've got four methods which will basically set these variables, these attributes uh, above here. And we could, for example, we could call this get first name and pass in the name John. It would then set this variable here to John. So I'm happy I've done that now. I'm happy I've got all the marks for doing that. It says ISONE would like a subclass. So superclasses are above subclasses. So I would do an arrow here get my boxes, my box out again, draw my box, draw my line, and it says subclass called staff. So I'll put in here staff, and it inherits from the class person. And that's what this arrow is for. It shows that it, everything inside the staff class will inherit um, sorry, the, the staff class will inherit everything from the person class. 
So that's why it's pointing to it like that. So I'm happy I've shown the inheritance there with the arrow. And the staff class should have a private attributes. So if protected is a hash, public is a plus, private for object oriented is a minus. That's how we denote it. So a private should have a private attribute called staff ID of type integer. So I would put in here attributes go in the top, remember? So minus staff ID colons of type integer. Simple as that. The staff class should have two public methods. So public, I'll put plus there and plus there. Two public methods. One for setting the staff ID. So that would be set staff ID, which accepts a parameter, so a single parameter. And because we're using integer, we would set it as an integer. And it says that there as well, which accepts a parameter of type integer so on that. And a method for returning the staff ID, which returns an integer value. So what that looks like, a little bit more complicated than before. So I'll read that again. One for setting the staff ID, which accepts a parameter of type integer. And a method for returning the staff ID, which returns an integer value. So public again. We're going to get, we we'll call it get this time because it returns get staff ID bracket bracket and then that's going to return. You have a return type now. So colons integer. What that means is you are going to, whatever you're going to return from that procedure, that method is going to return something of the data type integer and that's what's been asked in the question here. So create a class diagram for this solution. So just to recap that there then, we've got a superclass called person, superclass called person, the person class should have four attributes, we've got one, two, three, four, um, first name, surname, home address and postcode, correct, got all those, all of type string, yes, all of type string. The person class should have four public methods, one, two, three, four public methods to set each of the four attributes, which will, which all accept a single parameter. So string, 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 string. Isozone would like a subclass. There's my subclass below it. The arrow points to enforce the inheritance there. The staff class should have a private attribute called staff ID of type integer. There you go, private being the minus. The staff class should have two public methods two public methods, one for setting the staff ID, which accepts a parameter of, of type integer. There you go, parameter of type integer. And then a method for returning the staff ID, which returns an integer value. Here is my staff ID. We use get this time. And then I've got a colon and integer. And that will get us all of our 12 marks. So if you break that down, you're looking to get one mark for creating the superclass person and one mark for the subclass staff. So just for declaring this here and this here gets you one mark. So you have the correct inheritance order. So the arrow pointing to person, that will get you a mark as well. Then you've got four methods in person. So four methods in person here, that gets you one mark. Four attributes in person here, that gets you one mark. Two methods in staff, that gets you one mark. One attribute in staff gets you one mark. Four string parameters in person. So four string parameters, that's these, these things here, gets you one mark. One integer parameter in staff, integer parameter in staff, that's this thing here, gets you one mark. And one integer return from staff method here that gets you one mark. Then all methods public, so all the pluses here, all the pluses down there get you one mark, and then also your private and your protected ones also get you a mark as well. 12 marks in total for that question, and there we go.